Guardian. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. This is Eyes Up Guardian, a Destiny podcast. Recorded for Tuesday, May 7th, 2019, Episode 8. Intros are hard, especially when I'm trying to change format. All right, what do we got going on? Um, <clears throat> I had a plan for a show, and then Destiny seemed to, or I should say Bungie, uh, was delightful enough to drop a, a heap of news onto my lap, so rather than speculating about what's coming in Season of Opulence and uh, potentially Destiny 3, yada, 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 let's get into what we know now. So, um... On the second, Cosmo put up a post, uh, their week at Bungie here, saying that uh, essentially, revelry's over. Uh, for those that were able to participate in it, fantastic. For those that were not, well, most of those people hated the revelry event and are just looking forward to Destiny returning back to normal. Um, one thing to note, though, is that anybody that was not able to participate and uh, as such didn't get the Arbalist exotic weapon, it is now available as an exotic drop. Um, so you still have a chance to get at that. Um, past that, uh, we now have patch 2.2.2, which was released today. Um, this is going to include the changes to Spectral Blades, which uh, I guess was discussed a few weeks ago. Uh, and as well as a few other items which we'll get into here but the uh, spectral blades here let's see if we can find what that was uh, yes so uh, from the sandbox team as you're all aware spectral blades has been running amok in the crucible below you'll find a brief on our plans to rein it in a bit the two main issues are the length of the super especially combined with Gwyn's invest and the survivability of the player while it is active. To address this, we have made the following changes to hit those specific issues. Uh, number one is damage reduction. Out of stealth damage reduction uh, is going from 60 to 52%, and in stealth damage reduction is 62 to 54.4%. Uh, previously, the super had the highest damage reduction of all the roaming supers, either in stealth or not. This change reduces Spectral Blaze to have the lowest damage reduction of all the roaming supers while Stealth is not active, and to be in line with the low end while Stealth is active. While Stealth Vision through walls and fast shifty movement, or I'm sorry, with Stealth Vision through walls and fast shifty movement, this super ability actually has a lot of built in survivability. This means a lower damage reduction will demand better planning and positioning to survive for multiple kills, which lines up well with the fantasy of the path. Uh, this is also a first step towards trying out a roaming super with lower damage reduction, so let us know what you might think. Uh, additionally, the super reduction. Super length out of stealth with no attacking is from 17.5 to 14.5 seconds. And super length in stealth with no attacking is from 26.6 to 23.5 seconds. Uh, light melee cost has been increased by 50%. Uh, basically, we reduce the duration by 3 seconds overall. We want you to feel like you have time to plan and stealth with the understanding that you need to be deliberate and swift in your strikes. Additionally, we increase the cost of the light melee attack. It may seem like a lot on paper, but previously it was almost nothing. Uh, now you need to think just a little before spamming away. We didn't want to make that cost too much, and it's the only way to as it's the only way to chase people down, but it did need to have at least a small visible cost to make it more of a choice. And with the Gwis Invest, uh, we are looking at Gwis Invest now and we'll be playing with it in some changes. Okay, so there's no changes there. So beyond that then, uh, the additional changes that rolled out with this patch is that they fixed an issue where Dreaming City lore was not being awarded when completing an Ascendant Challenge. They also fixed an issue where Craig uh, Chaos Reach would not deal damage to enemies affected by other status effects such as Thorn Soul Devour or the Hunter Tethers. They also fixed an issue with, uh, where Warlocks were unable to blink after going through a portal. And fixed an issue in which Combination Blow was unintentionally magnifying damage of Arc Staff super attacks. They also fixed an issue where the Iron Ruby Shader was not dropping. On the Shader now has a chance to drop when dismantling Iron Banner gear. <clears throat> Beyond that, they did go and uh, fix the uh, uh, Invitation of the Nine, the Zura Bounty here. Uh, they actually went in and patched it so that um, the Vex 
uh, kills that you needed will now track in um, Prison of the Elders. Uh, let's see here. Um, then they also did the Verdant Light uh, challenges so that folks um, could get the triumphs from the revelry, revelry for only getting the 20 orbs. Um, with the uh, jubilant engrams where people who were erroneously awarded duplicate items from their revelries, jubilant ingram will receive an in-game message informing how this issue will be resolved for their account. And arc week emotes in the week following uh, this update, players who erroneously receive the incorrect arc emote during their Eververse purchase will receive an in-game message informing how this will be resolved for the account. So, um, that is going to kind of take care of that update here. I'm just going through the rest of the patch note. Uh, next Tuesday after the reset, revelry comes to an end. At that time, unnamed and unearned and unclaimed revelry triumphs will become hidden. Um, so I, with that, I didn't get any additional triumphs and I noticed that they still had not fixed the, um, em emblem. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, Destiny 2 known issues feature below are a list of recently emerged issues we are tracking in Destiny 2. Reaping with the basics bounty, we're investigating an issue where this prime weekly bounty is not counting kills with bows. And Hugin, Skull, and Postmaster were investigating an issue where tinctures, tinctures of Queen's Foil are not recovering to the Postmaster when purchased from the Hugin, Skull, and the Dreaming, Sk Dreaming City. All players have a full consumables inventory. So that kind of covers it for the um, uh, this week at Bungie. Um, I was able to go through and take out the tower test um, quest. Uh, if you want to see how that all plays out, I do have it uploaded on YouTube, and I'll put a link in the, the show notes with that. But essentially, how it breaks down is um, after you get your vex kills, of course, go to the derelict. Um, there's there's a hint there saying, "Oh yeah, investigate." You never know what might be there. I wasn't able to find anything on a you know relatively quick run through of the. Uh, derelict so went ahead and hopped through the portal and once again we're we go to the space of the endless lake and the stars with the giant emissary and it's another conversation between the drifter and Orin, who we know becomes the emissary uh, in the background we see either a crashed or a landed uh, ship of the awoken and then in the center is the platform where the two shapes of um, the drifter and Orin are speaking, and essentially Orin is um, is telling the Drifter that she is uh, leaving him, that their friendship is over, and it seems related to the fact that uh, he is, uh, she knows he's a Dredgen, and he's saying that you know I'm not a Dredgen, that I don't get called that anymore. Um, for those, I guess, not finally keened into uh, Destiny lore. Dredgens were uh, followers of Dredgen Yor, who was a guardian gone rogue and found a way to permakill other guardians, was the one who crafted the first weapon of sorrow from his previous hand cannon rose, turned it into thorn, which has uh, been a, the, the entire thing with the Dredgens and and uh, like Shin Malfur, Dredgen Yor, and the Drifter. It's the big story beat for this current expansion. So... Uh, after Drifter denies that he is the uh, no longer the uh, a Dredgen, Orin says, well, that's not what your buddy Callum says. And um, we know that uh, from an earlier mission in the Malfeasance questline, Callum was one of Drifter's partners. Um, Orin then also calls Drifter by one of the names he used previously back when he... Um, during the Dark Ages, uh, back when he lived at uh, the base of Felwinter Peak, uh, Wu Ming. So clearly, there's quite a bit of history between Orin and um, the Drifter. She knows a lot about him, more so than anybody else, I think, at this point. And there's you know, definitely history because she's showing us things and Drifter keeps telling us to, to leave her alone. So... It essentially ends with her walking out, and then this confirms, you know, my theory from last week that uh, IGN's fire team chat got wrong. That yes, uh, 
the the uh, awoken titan that we saw was in fact Orin, and we can see with the i guess better um markings on her armor that she is sporting uh the queen's regalia so it all kind of lines up um i'm a bit disappointed we didn't get another cinematic um that it was just more static models acting things out um i haven't read the lore entry yet essentially with the lore entries, I'm always waiting until the book is complete before I go through and read it because there might be pieces that, you know, explain in better detail um, other uh, entries in it. So rather than misinterpret things, I just wait until the book's complete. So uh, there should only be a couple more weeks of this. Uh, Friday, we will have the next bit drop, so I'll make sure to cover it then and, uh, you know, have, have everything ready in, in time for uh, the show next Tuesday. So, beyond that, um, I wasn't expecting much in this um, update. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Da -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Um, because uh, essentially what we were waiting for was the season of uh, opulence to get going here. But, as uh, Forbes' own Paul Tassi has noted, the... Uh, there is a new exotic quest available to us. Um, he had thought it would be something that would pop up in uh, Season of Opulence. However, it is uh, live now. And it is a return of yet another Destiny 1 exotic. This time it is Outbreak Prime, which appeared in... Um, crap, it wasn't... Uh, Rise of Iron. So, yeah, Rise of Iron. Um, so, essentially what happens here is... Um, it, it's not necessarily recreation, but it is a rather in-depth and involved quest. Um, it, because it was just discovered literally hours ago, people are still trying to figure it out. Um, but essentially it begins with a, uh, heroic adventure mission on Titan, which is live today, again, May 7th, um, with Titan being the new flashpoint. So the steps are to go into the room on the left after killing the Shrieker, Walk into the room, go right, and you'll find it on the machine. That's it for the first step. The device you get, the Fallen Transponder, has six nodes all linking toward the middle. The description reads, A fallen, uh, quote, a fallen global positioning transponder, jury-rigged for operation by human hands. Its encrypted interface seems to require locational data. Beyond that, your ghost can find nothing remarkable about this device except a brief plain text message embedded in its header files. Um, I've not yet done the quest, so uh, I'm just kind of going off what we have with Twitter um, because there was another gentleman um, by the handle of uh, at say no to rage where he lists the uh, lost sectors. Um, the first one is going for node one is going to be uh, the drain lost sector. Node two is in the whispered falls lost sector. Node three is in the atrium lost sector. Node four is widow's walk lost sector. Node 5, carry and pit lost sector. Uh, he says this one's a little tricky, behind a wall to the right of the chest. And node 6 is the rift lost sector. And then there was a, uh, um, a next step, uh, which is head to the farm. There's a right big, build, uh, big building on the right, and the outside cellar door is open. And that is as of 15 minutes ago. So uh, once I'm done recording this show, it's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go pop into Destiny. I still have to, you know, complete Izanagi's Burden. I screwed up and didn't uh, pursue the quest while Revelry was live, but, you know, it's it's going to be there. I'll get to it eventually. So, um, beyond that, I don't think there's really a whole lot to discuss. Um, like I said, we'll be back next Tuesday with whatever news I can get kicked up between, you know, the week at Bungie and, of course, the Zero Bounty. So, excited. Um, I, again, wasn't expecting anything this week, so it was a pleasant surprise. But that's going to wrap it up. Um, we will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>